So for this video, we're going to look at Deluge 2.1 firmware. We're going to look at the record to arranger function. In other words, we're going to be able to record our performance from the song view. You can't access this from the arranger view or from a track view. So you have to be in song view. Now I'm going to be using a complex template. Now I'm using this template because it's to illustrate how useful this function is, especially for people who have very complex setups. So in other words, all this is mostly just MIDI channels and it's all going to external synths that are being routed back in through a mixer into the line in track that I have here. So if you don't understand what I'm talking about, feel free to look at my templates video. So to illustrate this, I have a couple of little very basic tracks just to illustrate the functionality of how this is going to work. To my left here, I have a keyboard that is triggering a synth that is not actually programmed in any of these sections. So in other words, if I play that, it's actually going to record that as a white instance. It can play back any notes or even CCs. So if we can also go in to our master track. We can automate volumes and all the other effects. For example, you can do song fade out at the end and it will record the whole performance. So there is a condition to that. All the automation is recorded, but stutter effect will not be recorded. So in other words, this effect will not be recorded. Hold down record and press song. And then whatever we have set up here is what's going to start off playing, or in other words, printing to the arranger view. Just in case you make a mistake and you want to insert the loop at the start of the bar, shift mute to turn it on. Now, if you shift mute to turn it off, it will record that, but only within that bar. So in other words, because of this feature, you can't rapidly turn on and off tracks and have it record that. If you wanted to do something like that, I would recommend just creating the sequence for it and then triggering it in this method. Now, the beauty of this uh, record, you can see here, all these tracks, even unused tracks, are being recorded in. That makes it very easy for someone with a very complex setup to actually set up their whole song based just on the performance itself. And it makes it very much easier. Otherwise, we would have had to draw every single track in, not really knowing what track is what, and having to figure that out. You can easily just perform it right out. Now let's say, at the end of this, let's say we want this to start recording a new automation. So you would imagine the left entire column here as being the play line or the cursor. So right here would be the cursor. So as we can see, it's 28.1, and now we're at 29.1. This is a new display, by the way. It says, uh, it shows you the bar that we're looking at here. So if what we wanna do is go forward to 29, for example, bar 29, and then we'll go back into the song view and then we'll, we can start we can start from there so we printed in that track that entire area and we're going to add a note, whole another section here so let's just do that
Now I do want to mention one thing. To stop the automation recording, you can press either song or record. Now it does not lock to the end of the bar, so you have to have kind of good timing if you want to use this method of printing out each part. So just be aware if you are going to use this method and you want to skip ahead somewhere, uh, you will definitely want to make sure that you end it as close as you can to the end of that bar. Otherwise, there'll be a gap. So here's the demo of everything we just put together there so you can hear what it sounds like. So there's another method you can use with Arrange and Record. Let's say we want this part to play, instead of letting it play infinitely, we're holding down the color, we can turn this and we can tell it how many times to play through. So let's say we want this part to play twice so you can make that, for example, like a verse and then a chorus, we want that to play through, I don't know, one time. And then another section, you want that to play three times. And then for the last one, we'll leave it at infinite. Um, so what we're doing is we're chaining these. Now, this might look a little weird because it's going to be playing through from here downwards because actually the colors are going downwards from here. But I copied them up here so it's easy for me to reach all of them. So what I can do, we have that. It's going to go two, play it two times, then it's going to switch to this next one, which is will play once, three times, and then infinite. So it's just going to go, quote, down from here if I start it on this track, actually. So let's just do that and see how it sounds. Let's say we want it to go back to this again, you just press it again. Or just sit back and let it play through. <laughs> 